Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and the Properties and Structures of Matter video number 27 on covalent networks. In this particular video, we're going to be able to contrast the ionic networks from the previous video with covalent networks. And this is going to link quite nicely into some of what we talked about earlier with allotropes. Networks are one solid form of covalently bonded substances. Now this can include both elements as well as compounds. The best network covalent network element is the one we were talking about in the previous video, diamond. The diamond has a structure where each carbon is bonded in a kind of tetrahedral arrangement to four other carbon atoms and there's um, and this is how they are all bonded together it is a um, network because like ionic networks it just goes on and on and I could sort of identify the uh, carbons that are coming off each of these and they'll just keep going and this is one of the things that gives diamond its hardness there are no weak points there's nothing between any of the carbons that is any stronger or weaker than any others. And therefore, there, if you if you think about the analogy that any um, chain is only as strong as its weakest link, there are no weak links in diamond. And that means if you're trying to melt it, um, hit it, whatever you're trying to do to it, it's an incredibly hard substance and has incredibly high melting and boiling point. Now, if we contrast with something like uh, graphite, one of the differences with graphite is it's very strong um, within a plane. It is very diamond-like within the plane, but it has weak bonds between planes. Uh, and so therefore, uh, graphite, think of graphite more sheet-like. So whilst diamond has carbons um, connected in all directions, uh, graphite is more sheet-like. And there is actually a little bit of movement that can occur of electrons between these sheets of carbon. And as a result, graphite actually is a conductor of uh, electricity, which is an unusual uh, property for a covalent network. This is another very common covalent network that I've um, included on this slide. This is silicon dioxide. And you can see here the um, silicon atoms are the ones in red and the light blue ones are the oxygen ones. Silicon dioxide is the component of quartz, the mineral quartz, and very common in the beaches around Australia. The important thing about covalent networks is that all the bonds between the atoms are of equal strength. That is, there's no weak points. And this is one of the key aspects of covalent network solids. Like the ionic substances, they're hard, very hard, but they are also brittle. Um, they have very high melting and boiling points, as we talked about. Uh, carbon in the form of diamond is the has, has the highest uh, melting point of all elements. Um, they are, ex with the exception that I just mentioned for graphite, non-conductors of electricity. Okay, and this is both in the solid and the molten state. The electrons are not free to move. They're not free. And even in the liquid form, the electrons are still bound. And as a result of that, uh, there's no ion, so there's no charged particles to carry or transfer the energy, and therefore they are uh, all regarded as non-conductors. Most of the covalent network solids are chemically unreactive. Now you can um, get carbon in the form of diamond to react with oxygen uh, to form carbon dioxide, and you'll have to trust me for that because it's very expensive carbon dioxide to do yourself. Um, and these ones are insoluble in polar solvents. One of the important things is that we have a rule about solubility, which we'll look at a little bit later in the course. But to just tell you now, like dissolves like. So polar substances in polar and nonpolar substances will dissolve in nonpolar. Okay, and this is great because otherwise all of the sand in the beaches would dissolve every time the um, waves came in. So they don't. 
uh, because they're insoluble in water and of course diamond is as well. Contrast the covalent networks with the ionics so you get a bit of a sense and in fact it's not a bad idea to start building a little table, a comparison table, just so you have each of these different types of, of solids um, compared side by side in terms of their structure and bonding and also their properties. Thanks for watching.